a malevolent race of space vampires from Life Force explained. Hey everyone and welcome back to another horror movie video with Marvelous Videos. In today's video we bring to you something even more exciting and thrilling. We have a little bit of science fiction along with a little bit of horror going for us. And to top it all, it is a British film. The film is Life Force, which was released in 1985, directed by none other than Toby Hooper, who we all know and love from the film series of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It is based on a British science fiction horror novel by Colin Wilson called The Space Vampires, which was published in 1976. So it wasn't until nine years after that the film was made. Something pretty interesting about the film is that before Don Jacobi and Dan O'Bannon were hired to write the script, they had already been at least eight drafts written at that point. Be with me. The original runtime of the film with the director's cut was actually 2 hours and 8 minutes, but then the movie had to be cut down to 1 hour and 56 minutes because of a lot of censorship for its US release. The level of hard work put into making it this an interesting and entertaining film is really impressive. You are in for a ride full of fun. With a brilliant star cast, the film is centered around the vampires who have come from space. The title of the novel sure gives that much away, but there are so many more events taking place in the film. What is the goal of these space vampires, and do they have plans on paying Earth a visit? So, without further delay, let us dive right into the bizarre, scary, and sci-fi effects of what goes on in the film. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. In the blink of an eye, the terror begins, Life Force 1985. So, the film begins with a look at the space shuttle called Churchill. If you're thinking about Britain, that is right. The name of this space shuttle was in fact taken from former English Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill. With a joint crew of British and American, we find that they are on a mission to do some research on Halley's Comet. So while the crew is researching, they stumble upon a 150 mile long spaceship hidden in Halley's Comet. Yeah, who would not be intrigued if they found a spaceship this huge? So under the command of Colonel Tom Carlson, who is played by Steve Railsback, they decide to check out this mysterious spaceship. You would not believe that the model for this alien spaceship actually was an artichoke. Well, inspiration can sure come from bizarre places. Now the crew finds literally hundreds of dead bat-like creatures along with three naked humanoid bodies, two male and one female, inside glass containers. This sure looks pretty weird and scary. They decide to take the three bodies back to Earth with them. Oh, but something quite unexpected happens just then. Back on Earth, Mission Control has lost all contact with Churchill and they are completely in the dark about the situation. So a rescue mission is sent out to space to investigate. You'll not believe what how they found Churchill. So it looks like the entire ship was burned from the inside and burned pretty bad. All the crew members have now become burnt skeletons and to top it all, even the escape pods are missing. Now, you would think that those three glass containers would be destroyed as well, but that is the only thing which is completely intact, as if the fire never touched it. The rescue team then takes the three humanoid pods with them back to Earth. They are then taken to the European Space Research Centre in London. What happens next is horrifying and insanely scary. Remember there were two male bodies and a female body. Right before the doctor is about to perform an autopsy on the female body, the unexpected happens. She wakes up and literally drains the life out of that doctor. The doctor's body now looks exactly like those burnt crew members found on Churchill. Obviously, she was not going to stay at that facility. As soon as she escapes, there begins the the draining of life force of other humans. That is when we find out her ability to shapeshift. 
These three vampires are definitely bad news for the world. Next, meet Colonel Colin Kane, played by Peter Firth, who works for the Special Air Service. He is sent to investigate this whole vampire situation. Now, Dr. Hans Verlader, who is played by Frank Finlay, tells Colonel Kane how these vampires got here. The deadly information about them is that they apparently need the life force from others in order to survive. And now, the real fun is just about to begin, because now the other two male vampires have also worked woken up and escaped the facility. Now it looks like the doctor, whom the female vampire had attacked, is somehow suddenly awake. He attracts the doctor standing next to him and sucks the life force out of him to revive himself. It would appear that these vampires have the ability to attract those around them so they can successfully drain their life force. After locking up the doctor, who has now been turned into a vampire, they observe his behaviors to figure out what to expect from the other three vampires. That is when Dr. Falada realizes that these infected vampires need a human life force every two hours in order to survive. And guess what? If they don't get the life force that they need, then their body just explodes into a pile of dust. Now, if you remember that the rescuers were not able to find any escape pods back on Churchill, well, the team now receives information that in Texas, an escape pod from Churchill has been found with Colonel Carlson inside it. Upon talking to him, he tells Dr. Falada and Colonel Kane exactly what took place inside Churchill. Apparently, after they got the aliens on their ship, they slowly started draining out the life force of pretty much all the crew members. They did find out in their research that they were all vampires, but soon Colonel Carlson was the only one who was left alive. So he set fire to the spaceship in order to prevent them from reaching Earth and went into an escape pod. It looks like Carlson is having dreams about the female vampire, that she is sucking the life force out of him. He starts to think that this could be happening because there is some kind of a connection or a psychic link between him and the female space vampire. Now, after a session of hypnotherapy with Dr. Falada, they were able to pretty much narrow down the location of the female vampire. They find out that she is in a psychiatric hospital in Yorkshire, but as if that trouble was not enough, we soon find out that the vampire spaceship from Halley's Comet is now heading towards Earth. So, after leaving the body of a nurse, it turns out that the female vampire has taken control of the hospital manager, Dr. Armstrong. Carlson and Colonel Kane then sedate Dr. Armstrong in order to trap the female vampire inside of him. She now talks to them through Dr. Armstrong's body and tells them things that no one could ever guess. She reveals to everyone that they were all actually bats. But when Carlson and his crew came inside their spaceship, they read their minds and turned their external look to be that of humans. So basically, the face and structure of the female vampire that everyone sees is actually from the imagination of Carlson and not her real form. Okay, wow, that news will surely catch anybody off guard. Now, while all of this is happening in Yorkshire, Kane realizes that this is in fact just a ploy cooked up by the vampires in order to keep all of them away from London, so that in the meantime, the two male vampires can attack the rest of the city and transform everyone into beings just like them. Carlson then confesses to Kane that he did feel compelled to open the container of the female vampire and share his life force with her. Well, at least now we know why it happened. Taking a look at London, we see pretty much the majority of the people affected at this point, and chaos covers the entire city. Things are just about to turn for the worse in the film, as the life forces absorbed by the male vampires are being channeled to the female vampire, so that she can then transmit the accumulated energy to their spacecraft, which by the way is now in geosynchronous orbit over London. It does look like everyone is running out of time now. So Dr. Falada successfully kills one of the male vampires with the help of an ancient weapon of leaded iron. He then tells Carlson and Kane his theory that perhaps the creatures have visited Earth on a regular basis with the arrival of Halley's Comet, and that is how the vampire legends were created. Sadly, even he ends up getting affected, so he gives the weapon to Kane. Kudos to Carlson, because he tracks down the female vampire at St. Paul's Cathedral where she is currently lying on the altar and sending all the energy to her spaceship. Much to Carlson's surprise, she discloses that they have always been a part of each other due to the sharing of their life forces and that is how they also share their psychic bond. 
So, does that mean if she dies, he dies also? In the meantime, Cain kills off the other male vampire as well, and with the help of the same weapon, Carlson stabs the female vampire. After this, a whole burst of energy is released from her body, and the top of St. Paul's Cathedral blows off. Now, remember the vampire ship which was approaching? Well, it changes its course of direction and heads back to Haley's Comet. That sure was an explosive ending to the movie. Now let us dive into exploring the main antagonist of the sci-fi horror film, Life Force. The female space vampire. We have to give it to Hooper for creating such an interesting character with all her abilities. Her spacecraft was found hidden in the tail of Halley's Comet by HMS Churchill, as we all know. The female space vampire is played by the brilliant German actress Mathilda May. Oh, and guess what? In the film, she is never given a name. Everyone simply calls her the female vampire. Her character can also be called the princess of the space vampires. Throughout the entire film, the female space vampire is presented to us pretty much completely naked. Most actresses from the UK would not have been able to take on this kind of a role. Not many people know this, but that is exactly why casting someone for the role of the female vampire was extremely difficult because it came with its fair share of nudity. At the time when May auditioned for the role, she had only had one previous acting experience, but Hooper realized that no one could pull off this character better than her. May was also a ballerina, which went on on to prove quite effective for her being cast for this role. It was as if she had a special relationship to her body, and that is exactly what this role required. Although later on in an interview, she did tell her fans that even though she was initially quite embarrassed, she got used to it pretty quickly, but she would prefer to not do it again. Now, we are aware that the female space vampire has quite a lot of powers and abilities. She sure is intelligent enough to use them as and when required based on the situation she finds herself in. One such extremely handy and useful power of hers is definitely the ability to shapeshift. She was able to fool Colonel Kane and the rest of the team for a very long time by using this very power. It goes without saying that she is of course immortal and holds the power of telepathy. That is probably how she linked herself to Tom Carlson. But doing that might have turned out for her bad because Carlson was smart enough to use his psychic link against her. He discovered her exact locations, which certainly helped Kane to save the day. Energy absorption is probably her essential power because she needs that in order to stay alive. We all saw what happens to these vampires when they don't absorb the life force. Well, along with all these powers, it is safe to say that there does exist a weapon that can indeed end their lives, and that is the leaded iron weaponry. Now, you'll be surprised to find out that Life Force was originally scheduled for a shoot period of 17 weeks, but it ended up going five weeks over. That sure shows the level of dedication director Toby Hooper had towards making this film. Life Force is an amazing film that will surely satisfy one of those weekly horror cravings. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you watch Life Force as soon as possible. You don't want to miss out on all the fun from outer space and back to Earth. And on that note, we've come to the end of another thrilling video. We hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit like on the way out so that we can keep bringing you more such videos. Also, comment down below your take on this film. Until next time, stay safe and have a great day.